Regex is a tool to find different patterns in text, and it can speed up your workflow if you do any kind of data cleaning or data scraping. In this video, I'm going to cover just the basics of Regex, but in the next video, I'm going to go over some examples of how I use Regex to extract data and to web scrape. Regex is supported by a lot of text editors, so in VS Code, for example, if you hit Ctrl F to find, there should be an icon to enable Regex patterns. But we're going to be using this website called Regex 101, which is great for beginners because it helps explain your Regex patterns, and it's also pretty powerful for doing text cleaning. So let's learn some regular expressions. We're first going to start out with character classes, which allow us to specify the type of character that we're looking for. Slash W matches a word character. This includes letters, numbers, and underscores. So if we're searching for all instances of gray, both with an A and with an E, we can put a slash W for the third character, and that'll return all variants of gray. But it technically also matches words that start with GR and end with Y. But just like normal letters, you can put these character class elements together to make a sequence. So if we're looking for all three letter words that start with D, we could do D slash W slash W, and that would just give us dog. This isn't the best way of writing it, but we'll touch on that more in a bit. The next character class is slash D, which matches numbers. So it's similar to slash W, but only matches numbers and not letters or underscores. So if we're trying to select all the phone numbers that are formatted like this with the hyphens, we would do three slash Ds and then a hyphen and then three more, a hyphen, and then four of them. And like I said, this isn't the best way to write this, but we're going to cover that in a sec. You'll see though that it's matching our three phone numbers that are all formatted this way. Slash S matches a white space character, so spaces, tabs, and new lines. In Regex 101, you might not be able to see the new lines highlighted in blue because they're technically not visible, but you will see that it is a match. And the last character class we're going to cover is the period, which is the wild card. It'll match any character, so letters, numbers, spaces, and even special characters, but not new lines. So if I wanted to match all of these words, I could do B, E, period, T, and it would select the words even with a number in the middle, or a space, or a question mark. What if we want to be more selective about our pattern matching? In the first example, if I really only wanted the occurrence of gray and gray with an A and an E, how would I write that in regex? Luckily, we have groups to match a more specific subset of characters. The square brackets work as an OR so it'll match one occurrence of any of the letters in the brackets. So to find just our two versions of gray, we could search for gr and then ae in brackets and y. And that'll only match those two words and nothing else. You can also negate what's inside the brackets by adding a caret at the beginning, and then it's like having a wild card here that'll match anything except for what's in the brackets. The other type of regex group are the parentheses. We can do a similar thing to select our two versions of gray, the only difference is now we need to use a pipe operator to specify the or. So this is what it would look like if we wanted to select gray and gray. But with parentheses, we're not just restricted to matching with one character. We can have whole strings within our parentheses. So if I wanted to search for all versions of there, I could start out with the, and then in parentheses, we could do one with yre, then add the or, do one with ir, then add another or, and then do one with re. And you see that'll select all three versions of there. But now you'll notice that the text that was in parentheses is now highlighted in green here, and it's being captured. Capturing text like this with parentheses is actually really helpful when we want to do find and replace operations because we can reference the text that's being captured. Just to illustrate what I mean, let's go back to the phone number example. So here we're back to capturing our phone numbers, and let's put parentheses just around our area code. Now within regex101, we can go to substitution here, and then for the substitution, we could say the area code is, and we can reference this first capture group by doing dollar sign one. And now you see what our substitution would look like. And to go a step further, we can actually nest these capture groups within each other. So if we want to select the area code as one capture group, but then the whole phone number as the other capture group, we can now reference both of them and make this the area code of the full phone number, which is the first capture group, is the second capture group. And now you see what our respective text looks like. But again, writing out this slash D 10 times is pretty inefficient. And that's why regex has quantifiers. These don't work as individual components like the way we'd have a character class by itself. Instead, it quantifies the character directly before it, whether it's a character class or a specific letter or number or anything. So the first quantifier is the curly braces where we can specify a min and a max. And it's essentially saying that that character will show up between n and m times. So if we're looking for a character that shows up between one to five times, we would do one comma five. What's really powerful here is that if we're looking for at least n occurrences, we don't even need to specify the upper bound, so we could write n comma. And if we want exactly n occurrences, we would write just n without the comma and without the upper bound. So I added another phone number down here that has four digits to begin with. So let's see if we can make a regex pattern that's efficient and selects all of these phone numbers. Again, we'll do slash D, but now that can occur either three times or four times. Then there's a hyphen 
and then another number that occurs three times, a hyphen, and then another number that occurs four times. And now you see we get all of our phone numbers, and it's a lot more readable to write it like this. There are a few other quantifiers as well if we want our regex to be less wordy, but functionality-wise, the curly braces can actually cover all scenarios. So the star or asterisk means the character will appear zero or more times. So this is the equivalent of writing zero, comma in the curly braces. So if we wanted to select all of our hello strings in its entirety, we would write hello and then the exclamation mark at the end. Now with the star, because we know that it'll be at least zero times, but could be any number. The plus means the character will appear one or more times. So this is the equivalent of writing one comma in the curly braces. If we got rid of the star and made it a plus, you see that it doesn't select this last hello because it requires there to be at least one exclamation mark. And the last quantifier we're gonna cover is the question mark, which means either zero or one occurrence. So it's either there or it isn't, and this is the same as writing zero comma one or just comma one. If we make this a question mark at the end, now the exclamation point may or may not be there, and you see that it won't select the exclamation points towards the end of these first two strings. Another class of regex characters are the anchors. So if you have a piece of text that occurs specifically at the beginning or end of a line, you can use anchors to help you search for that pattern. The caret specifies that the character comes at the beginning of the string. Here we want to select the text each time Alice is talking and everything she says, but we don't want to select where Alice is being mentioned in the conversation by Bob. So we'll start out with the caret so regex knows that we want the beginning of the string, and then we'll write Alice with the colon, and we essentially don't know what she'll say afterwards, so we're gonna put a period down, and we want this to go to the end of the line, and we don't know how many characters it'll be, so we'll use an asterisk. And also, a quick thing about regex 101 is that there are different search modes, and in this case it's treating each new line as a separate string, with its own beginning and its own end. Theoretically, we could treat this as one giant string by going over here and disabling multi-line, and you can see now it's only selecting that very first question. We're gonna change this back to multi-line though. Now the opposite of the caret is the dollar sign, which specifies that the character right before it comes at the end of the string. So we'd put this at the end of our search pattern and that would signal that that's what the string ended with. So if we only wanted to select questions that Alice was asking, we could modify our search pattern and make it a slash question mark and then a dollar sign. And now you see we're only selecting questions. What's tricky here is that you'll notice that I put the slash right before the question mark, and that's so regex knows that we're looking for an actual question mark and not just using one as part of our search pattern. This right here is called an escape character, and we have to use it anytime we're trying to search for a special character that regex reserves for its other functions. So question marks, periods, dollar signs, etc. But that really covers the basics of regex and should be good enough for the majority of text cleaning or data scraping that you're doing. There are plenty of more advanced concepts and if you're interested in learning about those, I'd recommend checking out this tutorial which I'll link in the description. Additionally, I find that this regex cheat sheet is pretty helpful if you've got the basics down but still want a refresher. And check out part two of this video where I cover some concrete data cleaning and web scraping examples using regular expressions. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.